Excited to be introducing a new song to you all this morning. So, um, this is a song by Shane and Shane, um, and it's called "You've Already Won." It's a great song about the victory that Jesus has already won for us at the cross—a victory over sin and death. And because of that, the, there's nothing that we can't face in life because we know that the Lord has already overcome. And um, that struggle might be different for each one of us, but um, each one of those struggles and um, he's with us in it and he is um, already victorious over it so we're just gonna sing the first verse and chorus just to give you the idea to begin with and then we'll go back and sing the whole song properly together so it goes a little something like this the 
There's peace that outlasts darkness, hope that's in the blood. There's future grace that's mine today, that Jesus Christ has won. So I can face tomorrow, for tomorrow's in your hands. All I need, you will provide, just like you always have. I'm fighting a battle, you've already won. doing but I know what you've done I'm fighting a battle you've already won all right it's got a little bridge bit in it as well that's very simple but um, I'll just sing it for you quickly as well so that you know when we come to it I know how the story ends We will be with you again You're my savior, my defense No more fear in life or death Couldn't get much simpler than that Okay, let's give it a shot. Have I lost my guitar here? Yeah.
story ends we will be with you again you're my savior my defense no more fear in of Calvary. We thank you that because of his death and resurrection that we have been brought to life and that now in our lives there's nothing that we can't face because we know that you have overcome. Okay, well folks, let's um, use this opportunity just to pray uh, more widely as well. And one of the reasons, just to, a bit of family news this morning, some of you may have got a notification on, um, in the newsletter earlier in the week that just one of our dear friends, Fiona Ponton, uh, went to be with the Lord on Friday. Fiona was just a dearly loved part of this church family for so many years. Conscious that many of you will never have met Fiona. She had she'd quite severe health difficulties. And so for the latter part of her life, she was kind of uh, in and around care homes. But just a more godly woman you will not meet in life. And it was a joy to know her, had a cracking sense of humor. Uh, but whatever life threw at her, and it threw a lot at her, uh, just she was so steadfast in the Lord, and she loved the Lord Jesus. And so we're going to pray this morning for her family, particularly for Michael uh, and Douglas. And we're going to pray for her, her friends uh, as well this morning. But let's take great hope from the truths of what we've sung, that it's not about the strength of our faith, or the impressiveness of our lives. It's about the strength and the glory of our Savior and what he's done for us. So why don't we just bow our heads and let's pray for the Ponton family for some of the things going on in our world just now. And Paul would write in Romans 8, No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I'm sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. And so, Father, we praise you this morning that we read at the start that you are the God who flung stars into space 
And you are also the God who is near to the brokenhearted. Father, we bring to you this morning our own prayers for our our own lives, for those uh, in our friendship circles, for our world as well. And Father, we ask that in the silence now that you would be at work by your spirit, bringing the great hope of the gospel. And may he take the gospel and like a healing balm, like a refreshing drink to our souls, may it give us life this morning. Father, we pray for our world. We just maybe particularly just want to focus in on the situation in the Middle East. Father, we we thank you that you are a God who we read about in Scripture. Lord, you cannot tolerate evil. Father, we thought at the beginning of our singing that you are the holy God. You are the three times holy God. And so, Father, we just want to call out evil this morning in our world. Father, we, we thank you that Jesus said that he is the light of the world that's overcome the darkness. And so, Father, we just want to pray for the situation in Israel and Palestine and Gaza this morning. And Father, we just want to pray that you would stop those who are seeking to bring violence and revenge. Lord, we want to pray for humanitarian agencies who are trying to get through to bring comfort and to bring supplies for those who are caught up, Lord, in all of this. Father, we pray for those in positions of authority, both in the situation and also in the wider world, as they seek to react and bring a ceasefire, bring an end to the the devastating loss, Lord, that you would be with them and grant them great favor and wisdom. Lord, we want to pray particularly for your church this morning, your people in both of these lands, Lord, all over the world, but particularly there, Lord, who are seeking to be salt and light, disciples of Jesus in that part of the world. And we pray, Father, that you would grant them great strength today, Father, to show what the gospel does, to show how the Prince of Peace transforms lives and outlooks. And Lord, ultimately, thank you that you are the God of justice who will do right. So, Father, we just commit that situation to you. Father, we pray for our nation this morning. We thank you for our city Thank you, Father, that it's a place of of beauty and history. But Lord, we recognize as well it's a place of of darkness and and addiction, a place where crime goes on. And Father, we pray that you would help us and your church in this city, all these different gatherings that go on. Father, help us to be those who represent Jesus well. And as we were thinking about last week, because we love you, because you have restored us to yourself, Father. We want that love to overflow to our neighbors, those around about us. Father, we think this morning particularly of the Ferrywell Project. Thank you for our relationship that we have with them who are doing such great work in the the north of our city, some of the the poorest uh, areas of our city. And Father, we thank you for John and his team and all that those guys do. We thank you for their links into the local high school. Father, we thank you for their desire to appoint a new person to be able to help with this work. And Father, we just pray that you would greatly strengthen them as a team. Father, we think of Peebles Evangelical Church as well. We, we thank you for our partnership with them. And we pray for them, Lord, as they continue to meet together, that you would build them up, that you would help uh, just us to know how we can love and support. Thank you for Archie, Lord, and his willingness to go down and to begin to just minister there amongst the people. Father, we pray that this would be the start of something special. Lord, we pray that you would strengthen the believers there. And as they gather today, Lord, that you would be near to them. And Father, we pray for ourselves this morning. We thank you for every single person here today. Lord, we bring to you our own struggles, our concerns. Father, thank you that you are the God who knows even the numbers of hairs on our head. That is how intimately, Lord, you care for each of us. And so, Father, we pray particularly for the Ponton family today, Lord. Thank you for Fiona and her life and for her steadfast faith. Oh, Father, I pray that you would just be particularly with with Michael and with Douglas today. Lord, as they mourn, as they remember, as they think about the next week and couple of weeks with funeral arrangements and everything like that, Lord, would you be the God of peace in that situation? Lord, thank you that you are the God of all hope. Father, I pray for those of us here today who will be mourning Fiona's loss as well. 
Lord, would you by your spirit be working in our midst, Lord, bringing that soothing comfort of the gospel to our lives. And Father, we pray particularly as well as we look towards your words in just a few moments' time. Lord, would you teach us things? Would you mold us? Would you challenge us? Would you convict us? Would you strengthen and encourage us? Thank you that you are the God who speaks. And so, Father, we ask that you be with us for the remainder of our time together. In Jesus' is strong and in his perfect name we pray. Amen. Amen. Graham. Good morning. It's always a good morning on a Sunday because it's the time we get together as a church and we sing about the Lord Jesus, we learn about him and we look into his uh, word. Now, uh, maybe I don't have, I do have some props today. Maybe the boys and girls want to come round the front because I've got a, I need a few volunteers uh, for a few different bits and pieces. But first of all, I've got a question. Does anybody know what the first letter in the alphabet is? Maybe some of the girls on this side could tell me what the first letter, not you, Chloe, because you should know the alphabet by now. Anybody know what the first letter of the alphabet is? Marcy, Sana, Lucy, Lucy, Evie? Any of you guys know what the first letter of the alphabet is? What is it? No, not that one. (laughs) Anybody? I will have to go to Chloe. Chloe, do you know the alphabet? Sure. Okay, what's the first letter? A. A? Oh, A, A, right, okay, so it's A. That's how we say it in, the, in school these days, A. Now, here's a question. Does anybody know of a man's or a person's name in the Bible that has the, starts with the letter A? Anybody? Right, in us. Adam, Adam's a good one. Adam's the first one, so that's a good one. Adam, anyone else? <laughs> Right? Uh, it's for the children, Fiona, but that's fine. <laughs> uh, anyone else? Come on, there's loads of them. And we've been thinking about this chat for a few weeks now. Ah. Abraham. Abraham. Abimelech. Aaron. I was going to say Aaron, but there's an Aaron and an Aaron. Loads of names in the Bible, but the one we want to think about this morning is a, a man that we've been learning about for a number of weeks called Abraham. And listen, I've been feeling a bit like Abraham this weekend because we've been thinking about how Abraham, he left his home, well, he moved home, and then he left his dad's home and he moved to home again and then he moved again and then with Lot he then moved again and on Friday then we moved and I felt a little bit like Abraham uh, in the moving and unfortunately I lost some of my props so uh, we've only got some limited props this morning that you might be glad of. So I need two volunteers because we're thinking about a, we're thinking about, right, Tiago, Tiago and Ennis. I need you to come up here. A, because I need a couple of volunteers. Right, we've been thinking about Abraham uh, and his journey uh, through Genesis and how that he has to learn to trust God. And he demonstrates his trust in God by doing something beginning with O. Does anybody remember? Hmm. It's a small word, but it's a big word. Anyone? I'm going to have to ask Chloe. Obey. Obey, Yes. We've been, sh- we've been learning that Abraham has demonstrated that he's trusting God by obeying him. Now, he doesn't always obey God, but, but God has spoke to Abraham, and he said to Abraham, he says, I want you to take uh, your son Isaac, and I want you to, this is where you guys are going to get nervous, right? As I said, I've not brought all my props, you might be glad. Abraham takes his son Isaac. Now, you see, God had uh, blessed Abraham. He blessed him in many different ways. Can anybody tell me in the ways that God had blessed Abraham? There's not many kids here today. Hugo, do you want to give me one answer? How did God bless Abraham? Giving him a child. Him a, child a, a, a child called Isaac. Gonna you want to say that? Uh, sacrificing him. Oh, well, that's what we are learning about last week and we're going to cover it this week. But he gave him a name and he gave him a... Uh, he, prom- he promised to give him a place to live and he promised to give him a son and he promised to bless him and he promised to give him a great big family and he promised that all the families of the world would be blessed through his son called Isaac. But God asks Abraham to do something. He asks him to take his son and to go to a place 
uh, that he was going to show him and to offer his son to the Lord Jesus. So they set out and uh, they set out and uh, Abraham puts something that's in this bag. He gives this to Isaac. Who wants to be Abraham? Who wants to be Abraham? You will. Oh, I think you know the story, eh? Well, Abraham, he puts that on Isaac. So Isaac's got to carry that. You're going to carry that up the mountain, okay? And he takes this, which is, what do you think this is? A flame. A flame. And he also takes, now I'm looking, the knife has been left at home. (laughs) And they, they go with their servants and the donkey, that's been left at home as well. And they go to the place that God shows them. And Abraham and Isaac, they start to go up the mountain. And Isaac says to his dad, he says, Dad, look, we've got the wood and we've got the fire but we've got no lamb. sacrifice we've got no lamb for the sacrifice and Abraham says to his son that God will provide well they climb up to the top of the mountain and Abraham he you need to build this altar he builds an altar so we'll just use this as the altar with the wood to build the altar he builds an altar as God instructed him and when, once he's built that altar you guys have also haven't been to the school for building altars, have you? I'll let you off. He builds an altar, and then he takes his son, Isaac, and he binds his son, and he puts him on the altar, just like God had asked him. But before anything catastrophic happens, he hears a voice saying, stop. Don't touch the boy. Don't lay a hand on him. Don't harm him. Because what I've seen is, I've seen that you have listened to God, and that you've trusted God, and that you've obeyed him, and you've put God first, even over your family, you've put God first, and uh, because of that, I don't want you to touch your son, and at that point, he looks around, and he finds a, a ram that's caught in the bushes, and he takes the ram, and he sacrifices it, and, the, and Abraham calls that place, he calls it, the Lord will provide, on the mount of the, lo- on the, mount of the Lord it shall be provided, And this is just a small demonstration of how Abraham, through his life, has been learning to do two things. First of all, a word beginning with T that we've been learning about. Anyone? You guys know? Word beginning with T that we've been thinking about. Hugo. Trust. He's been learning to trust God. Now, listen, Abraham doesn't always trust God because God sometimes asks him to do something. Uh, and like we found in a difference in a, another story in Abraham, sometimes he goes off and he does his own thing, which is not what God wants. But we've been learning that, that Abraham learns to trust God even to the point that he was going to sacrifice his only son, the son that he loved, and the son that God had promised to bless all the, the families of the earth through. He was going to sacrifice him because he loved God and he learned to trust him. And he demonstrates his trust in God by doing something beginning with the word O. Oh, Chloe told us. Tiago. Obey. Obeying him. Trust and obey. And that's, something, that's a lesson for us, that we can learn to trust God uh, and we can learn to obey him because we trust him. Now, there's a verse that we've been learning and maybe we could say it together. It's in Psalm 145, verse 13. And it just demonstrates the simple story that we've thought about this morning. And yet it's such a wonderful story for us as Christians because it reminds us of the Lord Jesus when we think about that, that ram that was placed as a substitute, not Isaac, but as a substitute. It reminds us of the Lord Jesus being a substitute for our, a, 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 a substitute for us in that he died on a cross rather than us dying for our sins. Now, the verse in Psalm 145, verse 13, what does it say? Does anybody know? And you should know this because we had a little game with a hammer a few weeks ago. What does it start with? The Lord. Anyone want to give a bash? Adults can help this time if you want. Remember. You remember it. The Lord is trustworthy in all he promises and faithful in all he does. The Lord is trustworthy in all he promises and faithful in all he does. And that's, uh, that is what we've been learning about as we've been thinking about the story of Abraham is the Lord is trustworthy. We can trust him and we can learn to obey him because he has proved himself to be trustworthy time and time again. And what he says, he does, and what he promises is fulfilled. And we have saw that, we see that last week in the story of Abraham and Isaac. Now, you might be glad that you weren't tied up with the rope or the knife that was lost 
in the box, uh, as, as are many other things. But uh, that's just a simple story of uh, Abraham and Isaac this morning. You'd be glad there was no sacrifices. Cool. You take a seat and we'll pray. And then uh, we will, you guys will leave after Graham's announcement. And then you guys will leave. I don't know if we've got a slide with the rooms that they're going to. Cool, we'll do that in a second. Right, let's pray then. P-R-A-Y. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning uh, and we thank you that we can be together as a church family, that we can sing it to you, we can sing about you, we can sing about our Lord Jesus and the love that he had for us in becoming that substitute for us. Our Father, we just pray this morning that you would help us uh, to learn to trust you and more than just trust you, our Father, we just ask that you would help us, every single one of us, just to learn to obey you as well and to put you first. Our Father, we think about how Abraham put you first even over his own family. Our Father, we just pray that as we have thought about the simple story this morning, our Father, we just might learn these simple lessons. Our Father, we just pray that you be with us now as we open your word and we learn from it. And as the boys and girls go to their various classes, our Father, we just pray that all things will be done just to glorify and to honour you this morning. We ask you things, we pray, giving thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Right, so in creche, the creche is going to room two with Alex and Arlene. Uh, the field upstairs with Luca. Uh, in room three, sorry, with Luca and Peter. And then uh, uh, Sheba and Victoria have the kids' church in the upstairs hall. And embassy with Peter and Olivia. But thank you very much for listening. And I'll hand back over to Graham. Thanks, Graham. Uh, there is no announcement. Um, so, boys and girls, you are free to go to your rooms. Oh, as always, if you want to take advantage of that and you don't know where you're going, just grab somebody at the back. Uh, they would love to tell you where to go. Why don't you just take a minute, just turn to your neighbour, say hello. A lot of folks have joined us since we started. Uh, if you're struggling for conversation, what's the coolest thing about Edinburgh that you've recently discovered? Go for it. We'll come back in a minute. Okay, well do keep up those conversations after the service. We're going to turn to God's Word now, so let me invite you to grab a Bible and we're back in John's Gospel today and this is just a wonderful part of John's Gospel that is going to blow our minds this morning. Looking forward to JT coming in just a moment. John 13 is where we are and just give you a moment to find it, your own Bibles, you grab one of the pews or on your phone or it will, the words will go on the screen in just a moment, and Tophel is going to come and, and just read it to us now. So John 13, Tophel, and then JT over to you. So 
Good morning, church. So I am Tofel, member of this church, and uh, this morning we are reading in John chapter 13 from verse 1 to 20. John chapter 13, verse 1 to 20. It was just before the Passover festival. Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The evening meal was in progress, and the devil has already prompted Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father has put all things under his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter. You shall never wash my feet, Jesus answered. Unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then, Lord, Simon Peter replied, not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well, Jesus answered. Those who have heart but need only to wash their feet. Their whole body is clean, and you are clean, though not every one of you, for he knew who was going to betray him, and that was why he said not everyone was clean. When he has finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example so that you should do as I have done for you. Very 